Hey, welcome back. Craig Peterson here on WGAN and online, of course, CraigPeterson.com. And if you want to, you can subscribe to my email list. You'll find out about the free tutorials, the pop-up trainings, the courses, everything that I do to help make you and your business more secure. So again, CraigPeterson.com slash subscribe. I, I got to read this to you right now. I decided to cancel through Airbnb and tell them about what had happened. He went off at me, berated me for not handling it privately, told me I was acting in my own self-interest and basically belittled me. I ended up having to pay the first full month even though I stayed one night. His listing is still up and a review posted after my stay also mentions the silverfish. Isn't that something? Now, this is from a report that came out from Vice. Now, you might be familiar with Vice.com. There's there's a lot of decent stuff up there. But I want to tell you a little bit about my own experience uh, I've had with Airbnb and VRBO. Now, VRBO is vacation rentals. It's, it has been actually used more, I think, by businesses from well, the, the stuff I've read than it is by individuals. But I have had bad experiences with both of them. Every time I have had an Airbnb, I have had a bad experience. So let me tell you what I mean by a bad experience. For instance, I was out at Vegas at a conference and we thought, you know what, let's try Airbnb. I'm the tech guy, right? I need to understand this. Why wouldn't I go ahead and use Airbnb? It, it makes sense, right? So here the tech guy goes and we poke around, we read reviews, we read ratings, and we found a an apartment not far at all. I mean, like a half a mile from the convention center. And we thought, okay, this is going to be perfect because that means it's right by the strip. We could walk over there, hop a cab or, or hitch a ride and enjoy the strip. And in the morning, we can just walk over to the convention center. We're not going to have any problems parking because it's at an apartment. So let me start with that, with parking. And by the way, parking is another thing from this second Airbnb story. Uh, there was no parking. You, you had to park a half a mile, a mile away sometimes because people were just parking in the parking lot at the, at the um, apartment building. And there were no reserved parking slots for the apartment. So there's number one. Number two is we go in the apartment, it's really quite nice. And we find out that the apartment has two bedrooms. And apparently we had only booked one bedroom because that's all the listing talked about, the one bedroom. So we get there and we find, oh, okay, so this is our bedroom over here. Well, the bedroom did not have an ensuite bathroom. The bathroom for the bedroom was across the hall. So there we go. We get in there and, okay, fine. So our bathroom's across the hall. And we end up going to bed. We enjoyed it. It was a nice place, relatively clean, quite old. It was probably a 40, 50-year-old apartment. In the layout, you kind of expect there in the southwest where there's kind of a courtyard in the middle and it's a little two-story thing. And, you know, it kind of reminded me of when I lived in L.A. back in uh, about 1980, late 70s, early 80s. And, uh, you know, so that part was quite nice. And, you know, brand new shag rug in there. Well, you know, not brand new, but quite new and clean. So, you know, that part was all good. So we go to bed and then we, there, we hear just tons of commotion because somebody else who didn't speak English very well had come to stay at the apartment as well. And we hear them going into our bathroom. They're using our towels in our bathroom. They are very, very loud talking on the phone. They, they get a hold of the, the owner, right, of this Airbnb. Because apparently they got the same impression we did, which is there's one bedroom in this place. So they had an ensuite bathroom. We did not, but they were using our bathroom the whole time and our towels, and there's only one set of towels. 
it wasn't it wasn't a great experience at all and they kept us up for quite a while because they were just being so loud and and me you know i'm, I'm not a terribly outgoing guy you might not believe that but i'm a little bit of an introvert and as an introvert i didn't want to go out and confront these people who were i'm guessing or you know from asia they were speaking chinese or korean or japanese i have no idea and i just didn't want to mess with it so we get up in the morning we uh, and everything is okay ish and we go to the conference and then that night i guess these people are only there for one night so that night we had the whole place to ourselves which is okay so knowing that with airbnb i rate the place after i stay there but the owner of the place rates me and so there have been a lot of issues of retaliation when it comes to Airbnb. And if you stay at one of these places and you don't give them this glowing five-star review, then you're not going to get reviewed well and other people might not want you to stay at their place. So I gave it a reasonable rating. I can't remember what I gave it. You know, the place is clean and, and uh, you know, it was a nice place. And the, there is another bedroom, uh, you know, just kind of hint, hint, anybody reading this. Uh, this isn't going to be dedicated to you and uh, maybe your loved one you're staying with. And left it at that. So that's my first Airbnb story. And then my second Airbnb story, as I mentioned, had a lot to do with parking as well. And in this case, it was in the Toronto area, up in Brampton. And we rented a place there on Airbnb. You know, I figured, well, we'll give another chance, see what happens. And so this is a, what was it, one, two, three three bedroom place and they said it sleeps like eight or something like that which it did if you include the fold out couch and so we figured okay we need some parking so i had sent them a message saying hey it's going to be myself and a couple of my kids and some grandkids you know i want to make sure that there's plenty of parking i said oh yeah plenty of parking plenty of parking no problem and so we get there and there is one parking spot and it's in one of these I, I don't know if you know much about Canada and how they build their housing there but uh, one of the reasons I'm not that fond of it right I grew up there I was raised there but it was these townhouses that are built right on top of each other you know these zero property line things where there are three four or five of them attached to each other and so the only place you can park is on the, the the little garage place well the garage itself was full of stinking trash who knows how long it had been there and so you couldn't use the garage and you shared the driveway with the condo next door to you so you only had one parking spot so i had my car my daughter's car for her her husband and a couple of her kids and then one of my other kids also drove up there so we had to find a, a place to park now the good news was that the whole neighborhood was under construction and so they were able to park in the mud in one area where building wasn't happening right then and of course the next morning what shows up big dump trucks excavators everything else to work across the street from us uh that wasn't fun let me tell you that was not fun because we were worried about well what's going to happen to our cars with all of this heavy equipment on this little narrow street that is designed for really one car to go down the street if there's people parked on the street uh, so i we gotta go right now when we come back i'm gonna finish what happened with my airbnb and b and b and b story as well as my vrbo story and uh, we got a whole lot more to cover we're gonna get into this homeland security thing with the use aclu and more but uh, stick around You're listening to craig peterson of course on wgan online at craigpeterson.com is where you'll find me make sure you subscribe so that you get all of my free tutorials training courses everything craigpeterson.com stick around